What's going on, guys? Welcome back to The Daily Dish. I'm your host, Christian Royston, joined by my co-host, Logan Shanks. I'll have the women's basketball reporters introduce themselves. What's up, guys? Pavel Markovic. And Brett Twelmeyer. We got an exciting day ahead. Um, just This will probably be one of our last daily dishes, I assume, mm-hmm. because uh, the men's side filled out their roster. Yep. Uh, we saw a couple couple interesting gets this week, mm-hmm. especially with uh, one guy returning a lot sooner than we expected. Uh, but, you know, first of all, Iowa State got another forward, mm-hmm. some guy who kind of reminiscent of Trey King. Yeah, that's what I've been seeing a lot of, especially on Twitter and just kind of watching his film, really. Uh, he shoots the ball a lot. I mean, I would probably just say a lot better, has a little bit mm-hmm. more, I mean, more range than Trey. He's been shooting a lot of mid-ranges this past year. Uh, guy you're alluding to, I guess we should probably say his name is Joshua yeah, Jefferson. Joshua Jefferson. Uh, from St. Mary, averaged 10 points and six rebounds last season. So, I mean, we were talking about it going into the offseason that Iowa State need to focus on, you know, rebuilding their forward lineup. And they went in and, I mean, they've got him now. Uh, a couple other guys, I mean, Deshaun Jackson, uh, that other guy from Seattle, so... You know, they really just kind of went into the offseason with the head of steam. Yeah, Brantford, mm-hmm. uh, 6'11", guy, no, 6'10", mm-hmm. Deshaun Jackson, 6'10". 6'11". But, I mean, they've added size. I mean, Jefferson, he's efficient from the floor, which is nice because he almost he's almost a 50% uh, field goal shooter, which mm-hmm. is pretty solid. Uh, obviously, he, he doesn't really have a crazy. Inside, he's mm-hmm. going to be a presence in the paint, able to score pretty much anywhere mm-hmm. around the paint. I mean, that's kind of what Iowa State was missing when they lost, you know, Robert Jones, Trey King, Hassan Ward. So, I mean, he just adds more depth to the one spot that they were looking for. Yeah, and Jefferson was also praised a lot this past season for his defense, which you kind of mm-hmm. knew if TJ was going to go after guys in the portal, he's going to look for guys that are really good defensively. So, I mean, that's something that you're not going to have to be worried about. But, you know, him just playing his role, TJ's all just really about – he's kind of what you were alluding to. He's not looking for forwards that are, you know, going to be, you know, big NBA guys that can shoot threes. He's got his shooters and, you know, Kurt Jones, Keyshawn, Milan. I mean, so he's getting guys that can play their roles, and I think that's kind of what their focus was this offseason, which is to kind of get bigger. Yeah, and you talk about defense, and, I mean, they they obviously uh, – Picked up some guys from the portal that were good on defense, which obviously fits into TJ's, you know, motto pretty much. Mm-hmm. And this guy, I mean, his stats don't really like scream out to you. Yeah, he's crazy defensively, but I mean, you look at tape, you like he's all. I'm sure TJ can make him even better, but along with that, he's also efficient. I mean, he has over a, I think he has either a 1.5 or a two assist to turnover ratio. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, these are things like, that really make him valuable to the team. I mean, as opposed to somebody that's either a pure scorer or purely defensive. I mean, it seems like he can kind of do whatever he needs to do. Right. And this is probably one of the biggest gets that TJ's gotten in terms of just like the way that I think of like points per game or someone that was a big role in their past team. Because you look at the last couple transfers, like just even last season, Kurt Jones Mm -hmm. and Keyshawn, not really, they weren't really the stars of their, you know, team, or I guess, you know, they weren't going out there averaging like, you know, 20 points a game. Yeah. TJ's just not really looking for guys like that. And this, all of his picks this year have really seemed like Osselberger, like typical, mm-hmm. getting guys from maybe, you know, mid major schools, you know, guys that, you know, kind of have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. And I think he got another one of those in Jefferson. Yeah, that seems to just kind of be his, his MO at this point is you can't really get the, star players because they're not really leaving their schools Mm -hmm. but i mean you get the guys that are you know i mean this guy's a starter so i mean Mm -hmm. they're they're pretty decent players and i mean he started all 26 games he played this year Mm -hmm. obviously coming off a knee injury but i mean he should be fine going into next season but i mean you you pick up a starters from their teams you pick up guys that are you know near the top almost star players but not quite pretty much just like role players because what TJ wants is role players because mm-hmm. Iowa State doesn't really run like a, you know, 
based off of star players, I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah. And I'm just, with all the guys that he's gotten, I mean, really exciting, but also what's really exciting and really kind of interesting that we saw a couple of days ago is that Caden Fish is actually mm-hmm. coming back to Iowa State, a guy that they didn't really get to use a lot, mainly because, you know, he had an injury his whole freshman freshman season. So there's a couple different ways you can look at this. Maybe he really did want to come back to Iowa State. Maybe it was he just wasn't getting the offers that he wanted to in the transfer portal. So just kind of what were you thinking when you first saw that? I mean, it was kind of interesting because it was the same day as Jefferson getting, mm-hmm. I guess, committing. Um, mm-hmm. Although, obviously, there's probably talks between these guys like weeks in advance. But, I mean, Caden Fish, I feel like, was the case where, I mean, he was expected to be one of the best transfers you know, in the portal this mm-hmm. season just because he he was a true freshman. He he should be like a star player. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he was a decently high recruit as yeah. well. Uh, but we didn't really see a lot from him, and I think – uh, not a lot of schools saw anything from him, so I'm guessing he went out there, tested the waters, didn't really get anything better than Iowa State, so mm-hmm. he's like, I might as well just stay here at least one more year, you know, get get the necessary skills. And this, and it'll be interesting because maybe you know this is a guy that he works his way through the summer, maybe works his way into that second group because mm-hmm. I think what Iowa State's done really well also is that they've you know got a really good second group now, maybe like a good four other guys that you could put in there. Uh, you know, they've had, that's kind of been the main emphasis for TJ is he usually plays like eight or nine guys to kind of refueled that. So mm-hmm. I think they're going to have a really solid second group and maybe Caden Fish can work himself into that. Yeah, I think early in this last season, I mean, you would talk about the second group. They pretty much had like two separate teams mm-hmm. that they could have went out there and played with. And I think that second team, I mean, you look at the players like Hassan Ward and mm-hmm. Kurt Jones were on that second team. I think th- these are players that they could have honestly competed well against most teams in the nation mm-hmm. um, and as second team players, you know, six men and six men off mm-hmm. the bench. So I think you get a guy like Kanan Fish that can possibly fit into that second team with just some development, getting healthy, stuff like that. I mean, I think, I think Iowa State has done it again where they – continue to show their depth and continue to just build up their their second team. Yeah. And, you know, while Caden Fish is coming back, we also learned this week that Omaha Baloo actually probably one of, also like Caden Fish, the bigger, you know, guys in the mm-hmm. portal uh, committed to Wake Forest. Uh, I think that's kind of a little bit better than what I expected him to be, where for him to be at next season i thought he was going to go you know mid-major to kind of have that big role i think he still is going to have a big role at wake forest but i mean it's cool to see him go there because that place like iowa state also has a lot of history with men's basketball yeah and i mean it is it seems like it it would probably be a good fit for him too Mm because i mean the way that they play the game i think he will be one of he he could possibly be a star player there Mm -hmm. as opposed to you know, he can be good at Iowa State, but, I mean, with how defensively focused they are and how how much they run their rotations, it's not like he's going to see a ton of game time as a true freshman. Mm-hmm. But now he's in his sophomore season, and, I mean, he should see some decent play time at Wake Forest, mm-hmm. which will be good for him. And the only guy we're really waiting on from this year's team, from, you know, what I remember, is Jelani Hamilton – who's still mm-hmm. in the portal. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned it, but Pavletsky is going to Ohio. So, uh, But other than that, I think it's just Hamilton that's still in the portal. Yeah, and I mean, I could, I assume he'll he'll find a spot here mm-hmm. soon in the next couple weeks. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, Iowa State in itself, I mean, Jelani Hamilton t- can't do the thing that Caden Fish did because mm-hmm. Iowa State has filled the roster yeah. officially. So, I mean... Iowa State is one of the teams that already is looking towards next season Mm because they have have their pieces now. Right, and it's kind of nice to have this roster as a whole now because, I mean, I know they can't all get together for a couple months now, but Mm -hmm. just to kind of still have that kind of connectivity as a team, feel that developing now. So I think that is what kind of helped them out this season is, you know, all the – not just the hard work that they put in during the offseason, but just how close they all got, you know, as friends and not just teammates. So – you think maybe that kind of helps out with the roster being filled out in you know mid-April, but I mean it's just even more exciting. I'm already missing college basketball, mm-hmm. and I mean that you bring up that connectivity. I mean that's what they talked about a ton was just how how close they were as a group. Mm-hmm. You could see it in the way that they interacted with each other too. I mean they I can't even count the amount of times that they kept reiterating 
what was it like their bonfire they yeah. had before the season, you know, getting mm-hmm. their goals set straight. And that was something that the team, you know, the players organized. It wasn't like the coaches had them go mm-hmm. do their own event. No, the team was so close that they needed to like make sure that everybody was on the same page. So, mm-hmm. I mean, if they are that way again, I mean, Sweet 16 is kind of the floor for them mm-hmm. at this point. Playing a couple games of Among Us, you know, before yeah, every game. And stuff like <laughs> That was actually probably the craziest story that I read about them. But, you know, I thought the game was dead, but maybe Iowa State's bringing it back. Possibly. <laughs> we'll, we'll be on the rise. Get some new breaking news for you. <laughs> uh, but, you know, enough with the, uh, with the men's basketball team. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, they, they're kind of getting all their pieces in place. And I think the, the women's side is also getting their pieces in place. So yes, two we Iowa State started their official transfer gets first with T- TCU transfer Sydney Harris. Yeah, Sydney Harris is definitely one that I'm kind of excited for for her to come in because we knew that Iowa State was going to lose Hannah Bellinger, mm-hmm. really strong three point shooter, and Sydney Harris can definitely fill into that role. Uh, at TCU last season, she played 16 games, missed the first part of the season due to an ankle injury, so she was forced to sit. Then comes in, uh, scores nine points off the bench in every game. Uh, average nine points. Yeah, yeah. And then from three, she's shooting over 40%, 41.8% from three. So definitely going to fill into that role. Um, and then the year before that, she was at Central Michigan, mm-hmm. one MAC freshman of the year. So I think that Iowa State has a really strong piece right there. I'm lucky what Sydney Harris brings to the team. You know, with TCU dealing with all what they've done this season, you know, with the injuries and stuff, you know, she really performed this year. And now with Iowa State acquiring her is really nice. And talking about three-point shooters, we got another three-point shooter in Mackenzie Hare from Marquette. And, you know, she's one of the best three-point shooters, not just in the Big East, but in the entire country. She shoots a 42.5% from the three, and she's really lethal from beyond the arc. And that's one thing that Iowa State in the past has kind of – it's been their focal point of the team, really, is they don't really have a whole lot of bigs down low. It's They attack you from three-point range. And I think that Bill is kind of going all in on that this upcoming season. And uh, we'll just have to, I guess, see how it works out. But um, I think that they're definitely both going to be some pretty big pieces. And it's good that they're able to get these power six uh, players, too, because they're able to play at the top level in the sport. And they can definitely bring a lot to Iowa State. Yeah, you see, like with Harris and Hare, they still went up against uh, good competition. Like with Hare being in the Big East, still went up to teams like against UConn. And then with obviously the TCU, Harris has played against teams like, or hadn't played Iowa State last year, you know, but Mm -hmm. still played other teams in the Big 12. And they're both, you can see they both are able to compete at the highest level and shoot from beyond the arc, which is like we said, that's what they really needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now the roster for next season has worked its way up to 10. Mm -hmm. So still three spots left out there. And Honestly, for these final three spots, I would kind of like at least one of them to be a center. Mm -hmm. I know that Audie Crooks is more than likely going to be the starting center, Mm -hmm. and it's going to be tough having someone come off of the bench and back her up because we saw with Isno Nadabu, Mm -hmm. she's going to be leaving or she is in the transfer portal. portal, So she's going to end up being a senior, and I totally get why she left. She wasn't getting as much playing time Mm -hmm. as she wanted to, but... Now it kind of makes it hard of, well, you lost someone who has this experience. What are you going to do to try and get someone to back up Audie Crooks? Yeah, that's really the tough thing about it because you don't want to come into a place that want to be the backup center. You want to compete to be the starting center, but it's really obvious and known that Audie Crooks is most likely going to get the starting job Mm -hmm. this next season. So, I mean, it's really just finding potentially another Nadabu, you know, hopefully another team player that really can provide off the bench when Crooks is on the bench and, yeah, I mean, we just have to wait and see and who they get. Yeah, you might have to look at maybe like a, someone from a mid-major school or mm-hmm. maybe even a D2 school that is on the rise and could possibly compete at the next level. Mm-hmm. And they could use Iowa State to like bump them up to a bigger D1 program. It's right. not just like, it's kind of like a bridge in a way. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'd, I'd assume they could go lower level or they could stick with D1. You never know. It's just whoever wants to stay to have the fit, right fit of names. Yeah, and we know that like with the other players looking at them, like Emily Ryan, mm-hmm. Addie Brown, even Ariana Jackson, Kelsey Jones, they can knock down threes as well. Mm-hmm. So um, having all of them with these new players, and that's going to be great to have them shooting threes. But yeah, if you can get another center to back up Buddy Crooks, this team could definitely make a run. Yeah, especially given what their, the incoming freshmen can do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You talk about three-point shooters. Mm-hmm. We saw what the freshmen did this last year. We could see more 
impress the freshman coming in this next season as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think it's all we can really do is just you know keep keep an eye on the portal. I mean, obviously, can't really keep an eye on the men's side, but mm -hmm. we can keep out keep an eye out for I guess the last Ohio State player to commit to a team, see, mm -hmm. see where he's going. Uh, keep an eye on the incoming freshman. You know, as weird as it said, as weird as it is to say that basketball season is like kind of still going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's still a lot of stuff to, to pay attention to. So, I mean, I'm excited. Yeah. And just kind of some random things in my head that I was thinking about is that I saw us on Twitter a couple of days ago that, so Tyrus Hunter obviously goes to Memphis. Iowa State might actually end up playing Memphis when they're at the Maui Invitational, which, by the way, we could talk about that at a later date. I mean, that's going to be an awesome Invitational because you got Iowa State, it'll be Michigan State's there, Memphis, uh, UConn, mm -hmm. and North Carolina, I think. So, I mean, it feels like the time where, I mean, this is really the only part of kind of the non-conference where TJ really go, TJ and the program really kind of go all in of actually playing teams that aren't Grambling State or Green <laughs> Bay. So it's definitely it, nothing against yeah. nothing against them. <laughs> nothing against them. Grambling actually made the made the tournament this year, mm -hmm. so you can't knock them too much. But I mean, that's kind of just really exciting. A little bit more storylines coming up for next year as well. Yeah, that's kind of one of the exciting things about how TJ builds the schedule mm -hmm. is I mean you we've seen it the last couple of years now is they have these like I guess early non-conference season tournaments mm -hmm. which just have a lot of like really really tough teams in them I mean we saw I mean, Texas A&M last year mm -hmm. which I mean say what you want but that, that was a really good team uh -huh. even up until the tournament and then two years ago they played the number one team in the nation and beat them and they played the eventual national champion yeah and i think actually for both for both teams this year it was a huge stepping stone because like i remember when the women had to go to theirs they well they weren't they didn't perform well there mm -hmm. and you're kind of thinking like okay is this team like for lack of better words words cooked like was this <laughs> team gonna was the women's team gonna be like and the men's team needed it because they just really didn't know i felt like they just didn't really know how to play all together and that was a huge step forward for them and for the women's team as well mm -hmm. i mean they just I mean, what, it's because, you know, again, nothing against Green Bay or mm -hmm. State, but these, like, really low-level non-conference teams, they don't really show you what the team is going to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to compete in the Big 12, you're going to have to actually get some practice against real teams first. Mm -hmm. and I mean, that tournament was, like, their first time playing against real teams, mm -hmm. so... Well, plus they've got Marquette coming to Ames. That's next true. Year too, yeah, I would that all that. Which is a definitely better matchup than DePaul. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the road too. So yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. with Marquette, what they did last season, you know, it's gonna be a good matchup. They have to go to Hill and Coliseum though. Mm -hmm. with the Hill and fans, I don't know how they'll perform with that. They're gonna be in for a surprise. Tell you that much. Yeah, we'll see. That That's could a... be big for I would say. I could see that being like just one of their early like top twenty-five wins, especially mm -hmm. since they have it on campus on the Iowa State campus. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean. Nobody wins at Hilton. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, true. that's what's been very clear, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. especially if your name is Kansas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And in Kansas news, Hunter Dickinson's coming back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, talking about Dickinson coming back, I mean, that is kind of interesting in a sense where he was dominant last year. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously he got caught off guard by Iowa State, but mm -hmm. I mean, he pretty much ripped through most of the Big 12 teams. And you talk about Iowa State adding size – Hunter Dickinson still put up like 20 points against Iowa State. Yeah. So, I mean, they didn't have the size to deal with them, but I think this season now they probably do. Yeah. I mean, Iowa State might end up being one of the bigger teams in the Big 12. I mean, and, they're, yeah. and they, their guards are just even more experienced. So I think it's probably going to be like a little bit of growing pains, especially since you have literally like pretty much – all new forwards that are going to be, you know, in their starting lineup and on your bench. So I could see a little bit of trouble there, but I mean, nothing that some Altsburger basketball can't fix. Yeah. I mean, he was able to coach up Robert Jones and Hassan Ward to mm -hmm. the seasons they had last year. I mean, he should be able to do the same with whoever comes in. I mean, we've seen, we've seen big men come in and do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think I don't really see next season being any different. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we shall see what's in store for Hunter Dickinson if they end up going to Ames or maybe 
Iowa State goes to Allen Fieldhouse. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess only time will tell. Mm -hmm. So I think that's all we got for you guys today. Um, yeah, we'll be back at some point with some more basketball when we get more basketball information. So all we can do is just sit and wait. Uh, thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Daily Dish.